Hello, my name is Eric Casillo. I'm an eighth grader at Bethel Baptist Christian School. And today I'll be preaching a topical message. If you would, open your Bibles to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1. And it says here, Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. When I was a kid, I played this game called Follow the Leader. In this game, there's one leader, and all the other players are the followers. For example, if I was the leader here today, and I raised my right hand, all the followers would have to raise their right hand. If I was the leader here today, and raised my left hand, I'd be the follower and left, I raised my left hand. See that I'm showing by example what to do. I'm not telling my followers what to do, because if I am, I'd be more of an instructor than a leader. God has placed leaders in your lives. God has placed them in purpose. And those leaders are there not to hurt you. Those leaders are there not to keep you away from your goal. But they're there to lead you, to guide you, to help you. This doesn't only apply to your physical life, but your spiritual life also. Today, I'd like to tell you some reasons why you should follow your leaders. First of all, because where he preaches from. In 2 Timothy 3.16, it says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God. And it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Our leaders deliver the Bible. Our leaders desire the Bible. I think coffee. Many people love coffee in the morning. I personally don't like coffee because I still want to grow. <laughs> I still want to grow to be like 6'6 six, six or 6'8, six, maybe. But many people love coffee because it keeps them awake. Many people love coffee because it wakes them up. Coffee contains caffeine, and this caffeine causes a minor dependence. People in the morning need coffee. They desire it. And without coffee, they just, they're moody, they're grumpy, they can't think right. Our leaders treat the Bible like coffee. They need it. They desire it. They can't think without it. They can't go on with their day without it. So Christian, are you following a leader that's reading their Bibles? Second of all, you should follow your leaders because of the person he follows. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1, it said, Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Our God is omniscient, omnipotent, and omnipresent. This means that God is all-knowing, all-powerful, and, and is everywhere. God can do anything he wants, anytime, and anywhere. God is the author and finisher of our faith, and he's using the leaders in your lives to make a difference. A man was once walking by the beach upon which thousands of starfishes have been washed up. Left on the sand by the receding tide, the starfish were certain to die as the sun dried them out. The man also saw a boy picking up the starfish and flinging them back into the sea. Planning to teach a boy a little lesson about common sense, the man walked up to the boy and said, I've been watching you, and what are you doing, son? You have a good heart, and I know you mean well, but... You do realize how many beaches are around here and how many starfish are dying every day. Surely an industrious and kind-hearted boy such as yourself can find something better to do with your time. Do you really think what you're doing is going to make a difference? The boy looked up at the man, looked down at the starfish. He picked up the starfish, and as he gently tossed it back into the ocean, he said, it makes a difference in that one. Why wouldn't you want to follow a man of God? Our leaders walk with God, talk with God every day of their lives. Our leaders always spend time with God. I heard one say, you can't outlive God. You can't live without God. So who would you rather follow, a man of God or a person of this world? This decision will influence you greatly. This decision will determine what kind of Christian you're going to be. If you're going to be a faithful Christian or you're going to be a backslider. I've seen it in my church. I've seen it everywhere where there's a devoted Christian, a faithful Christian. And then there's one bad influence. And just that slight moment where he follows that bad influence, they go astray. Third of all, you should follow your leaders because he is a person of faith. In Luke 137 it says, For with God nothing shall be impossible. I've always seen in movies where someone walks into the woods. They drop something like bread or stones. In the remembrance of the way they came in. So when they're trying to get back out, they just look for that bread or that stone so that they can get out of the woods. The leaders in your lives are sort of like that. Maybe you walk into the woods. Maybe you walk into sin. Maybe you walk into temptation and you yield to it. Maybe you walk into wrong influences. But guess what? Those leaders are there.
to drop that bread for you. Those leaders are there to pave the way for you. Maybe those leaders are there so that you can get back home. You can get back to living a good life. You can get back to living for God. You can get back to being a faithful Christian. And lastly, because he has a passionate fire. In Colossians 3.23 says, And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as to the Lord, and not unto men. Recently, we were here for the Winter Classic. The Winter Classic is usually one of my favorite events of the year, because we just wake up, play basketball, eat, run around, and play basketball again. <laughs> we were playing a game, and in the beginning, we were losing really bad. I thought all hope was gone of winning this game. I just felt like I don't want to be there anymore. Our coach called a timeout. He was ripping our faces. He was telling us, you guys are not giving any hard. You guys are not playing hard. Your prize and egos are everywhere. But he was also encouraging us to play harder and as a team. Immediately after that timeout, we, were, we played hard. We played as a team. We dove for every loose ball, fought for every rebound. And at the end, when the game was on the line, we were all tied up, something bad happened. It was an inbound play, and then we turned the ball over. The other team scores and wins the game. We're out of the tournament. When we were in the locker room after that game, I was sitting there with just a jersey on my head, and I was just crying. I was crying like a little baby because I had passion to win that game. I had passion for the game. Our leaders are super passionate about living for God. Our leaders are super passionate about living for God that they invested their whole life. They invested money and they invested time. I've never met a man that regretted living for God, but rather they wish they could have done more. They wish they could have found out about Jesus early in their life. If you've ever seen a preacher preaching their lungs out, it's not because they know what you've done. It's not because they know the sins you've done or the people you hang out with, no. They're just passionate about you living a godly life. They're just passionate about you living right. So Christian, I'm talking to you today. Are you following your leaders? Thank you. Um.